Hello gentle viewers, this is Ab Guardian welcoming you back to Out of the Park Baseball 22 featuring the Houston Astros. In today's episode, we have another number one pick to make a decision on and then find other ways to improve our team to make them a little bit more reliable going forward. So, before we get into actual gameplay, I want to talk a little bit about defense. Because I think this is going to provide us an excellent opportunity <clears throat> excuse me, to understand how to read defensive statistics. Let's talk to one Joseph Morgan here. In OOTP, infielders are given four defensive ratings. And while I think two of them are pretty self-explanatory, let's talk about all four of them. What is range? In order to think of range, I want you to picture in your head um, somebody standing on a baseball field and then a circle around them. <clears throat> the circle is how far they can go in order to grab a particular ball. Now, for an infielder, it's almost more of an oval because it's more important to be able to go left to right as an infielder than is able to go forwards and backwards. I'm not saying it doesn't matter because it does, but the chances of a hard hit ball landing in just such a way that if you'd been able to move back pedal faster, you could have caught it is just not as important, in my opinion, as left to right. So that's kind of where we start. Um, now, for outfielders, it is more of that big circle. It's the ability to know how to break on the ball. When you see a batted ball flying towards you, it's that initial first step that tells you, oh, I've seen a dozen baseballs hit in this direction before. I should go here. And then you can make your decision from there. Error is pretty obvious. It's basically, does he make mistakes? <clears throat> but there's errors and there's errors. And that's one thing that I don't think OOTP catches their, well, their current defensive rating system. Let me give you an example. If you watch a premier shortstop who likes to, to showboat a little bit, you might see them diving for a ball they could easily have just picked up. Because uh, it, it looks cool, you make this diving stop and this brilliant throw from your knees, yada, yada, yada. So that makes the throw look more difficult when in reality it's actually pretty easy. Uh, no, maybe it's just the way they learn to play the game. I'm not saying they're doing it deliberently just to get on Sports Center or Web Gems or what have you, but they still have Web Gems. I'm sure they do. Uh, but I'm saying that's one style of player. And that kind of player can sometimes appear to be error prone because they're making hard balls look easy or easy balls look hard. They're doing extra stuff and so they screw up. Another category of player and how they deal with errors is the player with ridiculous range that gets to balls that other players just don't. Um, for all of his other issues, uh, which I won't go into right now. Omar Vizquel was, was one example of this kind of defender. Where he would make more errors than you might expect because he would get to balls that other players don't. Uh, and so what looks like an error and might even be scored as one by an official scorer is in fact <clears throat> turning a 1% chance into a 25% chance. And that's why we don't really trust errors as statistics. But there's a third kind of player that looks very lowly error prone. And that's the inverse of the player I just described. Um, I'm reminded of Mike Bordick, who was a shortstop for the Baltimore Orioles in the 90s. I don't remember what season this was, but I remember it was quite like I didn't get into baseball when I was a really young kid. I played Little League like most American boys do, but. I didn't get, I was like, this is a fun way to spend an afternoon. It wasn't really like, I love baseball. That didn't come until much later when I was already in my teens and 20s. Um, but I remember talking to my dad because I was playing high 2001. 
And I remember asking his advice because my dad played a lot of Stratomatic baseball. Um, and, I, and I said, hey, uh, I'm looking for a new shortstop. What do you think of Mike Bordick? And I remember him telling me, um, you know, he didn't have any errors last year, but he's not a very good shortstop. And I asked, you know, why? And he explained that the reason he didn't have any errors was because he basically wouldn't move out of a very circumscribed area. So if the ball would zip past him in a certain direction, he wouldn't even try. And so that would sometimes trick an official scorer who might say, you know, if there were a better shortstop on the field, they might have tried to get to it and failed, but at least tried. Uh, Mike Bordick would just kind of stand there. And so he wouldn't get charged with an error. So just because someone doesn't make errors doesn't make them a good fielder. It might actually mean quite the opposite. Um, so I ended up, I don't remember who I ended up taking uh, based on his advice, but that was something I remember quite clearly. Um, so that's what making errors means. And uh, it's, it's never been clear to me how or even if OOTP takes that into account. The ways to make an error, right? Because there's that amazing diving stop that required you to dive like 10 feet to your left. You throw from your back. And because your throw is slightly off target, the first baseman drops it. And so you get charged with a throwing error because the official scorer didn't have his extra helping of cereal that morning or whatever. Um. So that's that's one element of infield and off an outfield defense, but it's a little easier to see when people screw up in the outfield. Um, I don't think outfield errors are as subjective as infield errors are, because um, you just stand around uh, as a second baseman or shortstop, the outfielder can back you up. If you stand around and don't try to get a ball as an outfielder, while well, you're giving up a multi base hit, so. I think there is, uh, I think it's less subjective when outfielders make errors. Then we have infield arm, that's your arm strength, that's pretty straightforward. That's a lot more important for first base and third base, or second base, and or shortstop and third base than it is for first or second. Um, I'm not saying arm strength doesn't matter for second baseman, because sometimes they'll have to go off to their right and make a difficult throw, but I'm saying that if you have a, a player with a great arm, you're going to put him at short or third. You're not going to put him at second or first normally. Uh, which is one of the interesting debates I used to have with my friends about the late 90s Indians, which was, should they switch Omar and Roberto Alomar? Because Omar didn't have a very good arm. That was like the one brag that people had on him. Uh, compared to his contemporaries like Alex Rodriguez or Nomar Garcia Parra or even Derek Jeter, uh, Omar didn't have the best arm. His strength was in his range and his ability to make quick reactions. Whereas Roberto Alomar had a really good arm, but he played second base where you just don't throw as far for the most part. Um, but anyway, so that's infield and outfield arm is the same. Last is turn DP, turn double plays. And this is probably the most important stat for a second baseman because it's something they're often called on to do. This is basically the ability to cleanly receive the ball from the first uh, fielder, turn and make the throw in a very quick and smooth motion so that you nail the runner at first. Like if we're talking about your classic uh, six four three double play, which is short soft to second base to first base. Uh, it's going to be about shortstop grabbing it, flinging it to second base, that clear pivot, firing it off of the first base, and to make a double play. Uh, shortstops also turn double plays. Shortstops really need to be good at everything, in all honesty, because they do occasionally, just depending on where the ball is hit to, right? Uh, they might be the ones covering second, because maybe the second baseman uh, had to drop back, or maybe a shift, or who knows. So, I bring all of this up to say why I'm not keeping Joe Morgan at second base. And there's two main reasons here. The most important reason is his range is terrible. 
Remember, we're playing on the 1 to 100 scale. A 47 is really bad. It's below average, and range matters for a second baseman. Um, the other reason I'm not particularly sold on him is his infield air rating, which is slightly above average, but I don't get the sense that he's a player that knows his limitations like Mike Bordick and doesn't go for balls he can't get to. There's just nothing about this package that leaves me inclined to play him in second base. But, this is the big reason. Now, what is zone rating? Zone rating is um, a very, it's one of the most advanced defensive statistics that we have. And basically, it takes a baseball player and takes that imaginary circle, I think it's actually a square, and they have, they say lots and lots of batted balls and determine, okay, a league average second baseman should be able to get to balls in this, 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 and this area. If the player fails to get to the ball, that would be a minus. If they get to a ball we wouldn't expect the average player to get to, it would be a plus. So minus and plus. Uh, then they add them up over the course of the season, and if you have whatever the difference is between pluses and minuses, that is what your zone rating is. Uh, the main turned a lot of double plays, 105 to be precise. And he also cost us a win in the field. Because 10 points of zone rating is equivalent to one win. Uh, remember, if you score 10 extra runs in a season, that's a win. If you fail to rent 10 extra win, 10 extra runs, you cost your team a win. That's roughly how it works sabermetrically. Obviously, not every game is won by 10 runs or lost by 10 runs, but that's the rule of thumb. If you produce 10 more runs than an average player would, you would get credit for a win uh, in that sense. And so it's very possible... And you could certainly make an argument if you wanted to that the reason because the additional rating we haven't talked about yet is the actual position rating this acts as a modifier on everything below it so this means if he had some more experience maybe he'd be able to mitigate some of these weaknesses a bit more effectively um so this modifies everything below what's happening So it's fair to ask the question, hey, Avi, uh, he's at, he's only 21, couldn't he get better? And the answer is absolutely he could. But this is the only stat that will change. These stats only ever get worse. They rarely have ever improved. Uh, which makes sense, because that's how it is for most real-life players. Um, you're generally never as athletic as you are in your prime. Uh, but as you get older, you have more experience at the position, and you do some of the things that, say, an Andrew Jones would do, which is maybe his range was decaying because of injury or age or whatever, but he had played so much baseball that he knew, okay, I hear the crack of the bat, I see the ball jumping off the bat, I know which direction I need to go. And he gets that extra first couple of steps, that means he gets to a ball that someone with better range might not because he knows how to judge that particular ball. So, all this is to say, it is definitely not unrealistic that Joe Morgan might end up being a good second baseman. But right now, he is costing us runs on the field because he's not a very good second baseman yet. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think we have the time to let him figure that out. Um, guys, we were a really bad team last year. I need to start making the most out of the players that I do have, as well as getting new players. And I think moving him to first, at least for now, gives us a much better team. The rest of his skills will definitely play. His speed, his amazing discipline... His gap power, his ability to hit for contact, when that's, once that more fully develops, he's going to be an integral part of the Houston Astros for a very long time, just not a second base in my opinion. 
Okay. What else do we have to work with? Well, Paul Shaw was our best player on the Astros last season. Uh, so he is definitely going to be in third base, at third base for a while. Now, in a lot of ways, he's like Joe Morgan in that he's very young and doesn't have a lot of position experience. But he actually did pretty well. His errors were not great. Um, so he may not be a permanent third baseman, but he's at least good enough to handle the position for right this minute. And I, I don't really have a lot of other options. But who else do we have that genuinely would be part of the next very good to great Astros team? Uh, not Jerry Schoonmaker. Uh, Tommy Aggie is an incredible center fielder, but I'm concerned about his bat. He does a lot of little things quite well. He's very fast. Uh, he draws a few walks. He can hit for a bit of power. But right now, he's not an elite center fielder. I mean, his defense is. But even then, he makes a lot of errors and doesn't have a great arm. But whatever. Tommy Aggie could be an exceptional center fielder. Or he could end up being just not very good. Now, he did offer quite a bit of power. And there's a lot to like about him. But is he necessarily guaranteed a spot on the world champion Astros? Maybe not. Art Shamsky has to be on the roster by default. While there's other players that can offer some power, uh, like Jim Paglieroni, uh, he's the only one who can hit the ball consistently and also have decent contact. Uh, so I think Mr. Shamsky here is going to be another key piece. Now, I say all of this to say that only Fergie Jenkins right now is untouchable. Uh, if he doesn't work with you, I'll be honestly quite surprised. Um, somebody made a great comment, I think it was Tom Langman, but maybe it wasn't, about trading Bill Singer and trying to get a premium bat. Bill Singer is still seen as the number one prospect in all of Major League Baseball. Let that soak in for a moment. This is a player whose minor league track record is absolute utter garbage, but he's still ranked as the number one prospect in Major League Baseball. We are a pitching poor team that could definitely use another top tier starter. However, his because of the weird way the game used him by making him basically pitch every single day, Instead of using ghost players correctly, uh, which, by the way, the way ghost players are supposed to work, it's supposed to make unknown players to fill out the roster if they're incomplete. For whatever reason, it's not doing that. I don't know if that's a glitch in the game, if there's something wrong with my actual settings somehow. I don't know. Let me real quick, like... No, okay. I didn't think it was there. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that, um, but it is kind of annoying. I could just I could just use a league action to fill. Uh, if we go to options here, no functions here, I could just fill them all up with fictional players. I don't think I'm going to do that, but that is an option uh, that we might want to consider potentially. Any hoozle, let us, my dear friends, talk about how we're going to make this team better. And it starts with Bill Singer. We have a lot of average to good players, but we don't have a single offensive superstar. Uh, we have a lot of good players, but we don't have any superstars. And that needs to be the first thing we address. And this is unfortunately the kind of draft if we take ourselves a peek here at the upcoming draft, this is not a great draft to want a position player. This is a great draft to want a pitcher, not so much a position player. Um, and so if we're going to get a quality position player, it's going to come from trade. So we, my friends, are going to go ahead and trade Bill Singer. 
Uh, we're gonna be very su- we're gonna be very careful about who we trade him to, but we're gonna trade him. All batters, please. Let's go. I'm getting a lot of offers, which does not surprise me in the least. Oh damn, Hank Aaron. Um. I mean, we might be able to get even better. I don't want Tony Kubak. It's very tempting. But I'm, I'm trying to be... I'm trying not to just keep bringing in the same players over and over again. Kurt Flood? Mm, maybe. George Altman? Uh, how Gene Alley? No, uh, uh We have to hit on this trade. I am awfully tempted by the view of Hank Aaron, though. Like, I don't dislike Kurt Flood. I think he's an incredible player. But... You know, before I make a decision, I should probably have a new scouting director, huh? Okay, great. Thanks for making me activate a guy who's just going to retire anyway. Cool story, bro. Yeah, I want to wait a little bit to make this trade until I see what my scouting director thinks. Uh, Mr. Willingham, I doubt you got a better offer than, than I gave you. How's about 30 grand? Let's freaking go. I'm not even gonna hesitate. Very good. Bro, you are not getting a better offer from me. I'll tell you what's probably happening. Somebody is probably trying to hire you as a manager. Which is very stupid because I don't think you'd be a very good one. Oh. Oh, I see the problem. He was never meant to be my hitting coach. Oh, I see. Yeah, why are you being... Wait, what the fuck? Oh, I wonder if I hired him for two different positions. I'm... Yeah, whatever. I'm a potato. Hey, Paglironi got a gold glove. Very nice. Very nice. Very evil. Okay. Okay. Cool story. We've got ourselves one hell of a coaching staff. Um, look, it's going to take some time. You're going to have to just trust me. Uh, Jerry Lynn's going to teach the outfield and base running. Now we'll let Alejandro Antonio do that. That's all fine. Okay. Now that I have a scouting director in place, now I feel more confident about being able to make a trade. So, my friends, let us try to offer up Bill Singer in trade again, and let's see who might be offered. Um, I wouldn't mind including Nelly Fox if we could get a really great player, like a truly transcendent one, but I'm not opposed to it. Where's Hank Aaron? You're no longer offering Hank Aaron. That's disconcerting. You pull them off the table. Okay, I'm going to come back to Cardinal. But I just want to keep looking for it now and see who else is actually being offered to me. Interesting. A lot of players were taken off the board. 
That's unfortunate. I may regret that quite severely because I could have had Hank Aaron and I didn't pull the trigger because I wanted more information and that might bite me in the ass. Briggs, meh. Barry, meh. Stanley, meh. Schofield is a big fat no. I don't want a shortstop that's that good, but is also that bad at hitting. I can be a little bit pickier. Nope. Nope. Mm. Why do you do this to me, game? Why do you tantalize me with an option and then take it away from me? That just makes me sad. Um, Dick Allen would offer a premium bat. There's no disputing that. But he's not a very good fielder. Tony Canigliaro is a little better as a fielder, but again... Not a perfect player. Hawk Harrelson is okay. If we wanted a big time bat and all we cared about was bat, Dick Allen would be number one on my list with a bullet. But let's keep looking. Alex Johnson, not that exciting. Jose Cardinal is... A really good possibility, actually. He's a really great athlete. Uh, very good all-around bat skills. And he's a good fielder, too. Um, hmm. Don Locke is just a better fielding Dick Allen. So here's the question. So basically, I see two options here that could both make a big impact, but in very different directions. Jose Cardinal is clearly the better all-around player. He's very good defensively. He's still got a very potent bat, and he's got plenty of speed. Uh, he could bat literally anywhere in the order and give us a lot of high quality. Our latest scouting report says he's going to have a key role and could be a 330 hitter. Then there's Dick Allen, who is a power hitter's dream, um, but isn't quite as good a fielder. He's not quite as good defensively. Um, like, if the man's hitting 300 and slugging 500, I fail to see how that would cause any issues but there's also Canigliaro but so the other question is this could I get two players to sing her and that would be a very fine thing indeed like if I could get Alan and Canigliaro and basically rebuild my entire outfield I would be over the moon with that I'm also pretty sure that's not going to happen, but let's start here. Can I get Mr. Canigliaro as well? You also, holy shit, are you guys like the new Tigers where you're going to have every outfielder in the game? I love Orlando Cepeda. You're going to tell me to get bent though. Oh, I literally can't afford him. Uh, that's okay. What if I offered you Nelly Fox? Oh, really? Uh, hmm. I could offer you Gates Brown. Yeah, so that's an interesting problem I didn't think of. We can't afford both of them. Yeah, so that being said, the fact I know I can only get one player, I'd rather have Cardinal. 
I'd rather have the all-around better player. Um, and let's see. Do you have any interesting prospects, I wonder? Uh, could I get Dave Duncan, too? I'm not saying I necessarily have any great use for him, but it would be nice to have another reliable catcher. No. Yeah, Duncan, I appreciate your... Mm, yep, we're doing it. I'm not going to let that one soak anymore. I'm going to do it. Uh, Cardinal is most definitely a left fielder in this line, in this offense. Uh, so we're going to set him to left. And uh, we're going to give him an important role on this team. Uh, that that very, may very well bite me in the ass. I'm not saying it won't. But I think we got the very best player we could. And he gives us a better all-around team. Uh, we still do need a second baseman, though. Uh, I wonder if I traded Mr. Nelly Fox if I could acquire a quality second baseman. Nope. Nah, that's fair. I could try trading Gates Brown. Um, and see if that can buy me a second baseman. I mean, I like the idea of Tom Satriano, but he's not perfect. He's better than Joe Morgan, though. That's an undisputable fact. We'll keep looking. It looks like that's the best I can get. Oh, hang on. Bobby Knoop? Eh. Maybe? I'm not overwhelmed with joy at the idea of adding a player whose offensive skill set is so limited, but... Marty Martinez is a really good second baseman. He, again, he's not perfect. I see the errors, but everything else about his game is great. But his offense is going to be almost entirely driven by his ability to hit for average. And that is somewhat disconcerting. Because if he's not hitting for average, he's not getting for enough power to make the rest of his game work. But he is very good defensively. Um. <coughs> Tom Sotfiona has fewer holes in his game, but I think we're going to go with Marty Martinez. Um, yeah, we're going to do that. Done. I think having a really good defender is really important at second base, and I think that'll set us up nicely for the rest of this. Can I get anything for Nelly Fox? Just anything at all. Joe Gibbon, come on down. We don't have a great relief, a great bullpen right now, so I will happily uh, upgrade there. Like, Joe Gibbon is out instantly one of my best relievers, so that's, yeah. That's a decent upgrade. So we're going to take Don Sutton in the draft. Um, and then I guess we'll see who's available in the later rounds. But I think we're a better team now than they were when we started the offseason. Wait a minute. I didn't get Rookie of the Year. Who the fuck got Rookie of the Year? <clears throat> Wait, you picked Steve Hargan. Okay, Steve Hargan was actually a better pitcher. You know what? I'll take that. 
Damn, I thought Fergie Jenkins had it in the bag. But you know what? This number right here, the voters care about that. They shouldn't, but they do. I wonder if Fergie Jenkins got any votes there. He did not. Oh, well. It be like that sometimes. Okay, let us find ourselves some Hall of Famers. Uh, Jim Bagby Jr., sure. Lou Boudreau, yes. <clears throat> uh, Blue Ferris, yes. Joe Gordon. Uh, Buddy Lewis is the only obvious first ballot guy here, but he definitely is a first ballot Hall of Famer. There's no disputing that. Um, Chet Ross is two, so that's two. Damn, Chet Ross won five MVPs. Holy shit, man. Save some for the rest of us. Uh, Bear Tracks is a pretty great nickname. I'd vote for that. Um, I'll vote for Wally Udnich, Fred Hutchinson. I guess Frankie Hayes would be reasonable. <clears throat> Let me get some some delicious Gatorade. I'll go for Dom DiMaggio and Bill Delancey. And there we go. <clears throat> All right, my friends. It is Don Smith, Don Sutton, my friends. He is our pick. Done. Okay. And now we need to decide who our second pick is. And given our weakness in our bullpen... I don't hate the idea of grabbing Dave Baldwin. But we still don't have a lot of great starting candidates, even with Don Hudson. And as much as I'd love to grab some quality batters, at the end of the day, we really need more pitching. Um, so let's talk about our three options here. Chuck Dobson, first of all. Dobson is not a very good pitcher. I am not enthusiastic about every, any aspect of his game. He's merely very average. Because of his big frame, he does have a fair bit to add some velocity, which might help the rest of his game too. I'm not enamored with Chuck Dobson. Rich Nye would be a great reliever, but he doesn't have the stamina to be a good starter. Gene Broadbender has the same issue. <clears throat> You're really going to make me tech Chuck Dobson, aren't you? Even though he's clearly the worst option, just because he actually has the stamina to not be the worst pitcher in the league. Gross. I'm not opposed to George Scott if I had a position for him. 
Which I don't. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anybody here that tickles my fancy. Maybe I will take Dave Baldwin. Fuck it. Um, okay. We can have Hank Allen. Uh, we can maybe con confuse our fans a bit. No, we totally got Hank Allen. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Tim Cullen isn't disgusting, but we're already at the point where we're getting really weak players. Gross. Yeah, we're already at the stage in this game where I don't have a pitcher that I truly trust. There's literally no starting pitchers left in the draft. Oh, my dear. Okay. Uh, hey, scouting director, do what you want. Because this is going to be a rough season no matter what happens. I'll be honest, I'm probably just going to not sign the third round pick and get an extra one in the next draft, hoping it's a bit deeper. Because, <clears throat> man, Jim, Larry Haney doesn't really do it for me. I think I'll get me another third round pick. Oh, dear. Rule 5 draft time. I have to be in on a, any starter that's even remotely okay. Because right now, our rotation is Jenkins, Sutton, and Martin. And Martin should not be a starting pitcher. I need at least two starting pitchers uh, somehow, some way, if we're going to be even remotely competitive. We've really shored up the lineup to the point where I feel pretty good about it. I think we've got a good mix of players with differing levels of talent, and I think it's going to do very well for us. But, man, we're going to need a lot of help. Are there any starting pitchers? There's Tom Poholsky. You know what? You're a garbage tier player, and I have absolutely no leverage in this discussion whatsoever. You're in. These are genuinely bad pitchers, and I just have to take them because I just see warm bodies and throw baseballs every now and again. Raleigh Sheldon, you're in. Is there anybody else that's actually good? Um, nah. Okay. Done. Yeah, we're still a really bad pitching staff, but we're less bad now, I think. At least I have a couple people that I'm reasonably sure won't embarrass me as much. Hey, Don Sutton. Majors. Majors. Ahem. Because obviously, remember, I don't know why he isn't retiring yet. I don't actually know what's going on with Johnny Padres, but...
Was Chet Ross all that good? Oh, yeah, he was, definitely. And Buddy Lewis made it. That's who I thought would make it. So I don't know what's going on with Donnie Podres. I don't know why he's not retiring, but I'm just going to put him right back on the IL. That's good. Okay. What do we have that could potentially buy us another starting pitcher? Another good starting pitcher, I hesitate to add. Maybe Earl Averill? Maybe someone is desperate for a pinch hitter? Like, I quite frankly don't see why I'd keep him on the roster. So let's see if we can get his... Nope. Literally nobody. Great. How much money is Earl Averill making? He's not making a large amount, but he's not making a small amount either. We don't have any good starters. Available. Rotate traded Archie Moore. <clears throat> Surely somebody wants a center fielder who's not a great center fielder, right? Wow. Okay. Well, fuck you all in particular. Uh, so let's go ahead and set this all up. And this. Hey, and we're going to zip on through to opening day. Now, I'm not going to tank. Um, I know this next draft will also have Reggie Jackson and a couple of the really good hitters in it. But I'm not going to tank just for that. If we lose, we lose. And I think we'll lose no matter what I choose. But um, I'm definitely not going to intentionally throw a game. Just, that's just not... I just can't do that. Not in a video game anyway. Um, I'm also not convinced that tanking works in baseball. I mean, I guess it worked for the real life Astros. Um, but I think in most cases it doesn't. I think in most cases it actually costs you too many fans. Uh, and that really creates an issue. Um, I am going to carry 12 pitchers for the first time this season. <clears throat> we don't have a great rotation. And so it's going to be really important to rely on depth wherever we can get it. Uh, Ray Martin is dead armed. Benny to the Miners. Sheldon can go back to his team. So can Poholsky. I guess grow for Powell just because his control is just awful. I'd like him to work on that a bit in the minors. I have no starting pitchers in the minor leagues, by the way, which is pretty funny. I've got to send two position players down now. Um, I'm just... Hmm, hmm. No, Shoemaker is only good at defense. That's not a good enough reason to keep him on the roster. I 
I'm going to send down McMullen. I like they're keeping Avril on the roster to fill in at first base or even in a pinch third base. And he's got a lot of power, which could be really helpful off the bench. Um, so, there we go. And we're going to jump right up to opening day, and then we're going to redo all of the things. Okay. I like how Bill Singer is now entirely off the top 10. Uh, so maybe that was the right decision. In fact, I'm pretty certain it was the right decision, but. Uh, we don't have an actual backup starter on the roster, so that's kind of gross. Um, I probably need to fix that. Let me trade you for a starting pitcher. Nobody, huh? How about Grover Powell? That might get some, some attention. Yeah, give me Ken McBride. Um, and then I will find a reliever to send down. Probably Hefner here. And then McBride uh, is going to be emergency starter. Okay, I'm perfectly fine with this with this setup. Um, our big X factor in the rotation is going to be Herb's score. If his strikeouts overcome his generally terrible walk rate, we might get something useful out of him. Uh, and it really costs us nothing to find out. So I am willing to give him at least an opportunity uh, to help us out here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just let you set the initial lineup, and then I'll decide if I want to make any changes. I don't. I like it. Let's, let's get it done, my friends. Let's get it done. His arm is even deader now. Maybe it's undead now. That's how dead his arm is. And we're going to keep going. Oh, that's fine, Tommy. It's not fine, but I can't do anything about it. I mean, I guess I could promote Archie more. He wouldn't be the worst choice, but I think maybe for right now, we can let Alice Burton play center for a few weeks. Oh my god, Tommy, really? Also, how are we a half game out of the out of the first place? Just how? In what fashion? Omanis oh, controls up to eight. That's Cy Young right there. That is Cy freaking Young. Roy Martin threw a no hitter. Um, okay. Oh my god, what a team we have. What a team we have. Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. 
How does this team have 16 wins already? I have no idea. I mean, Joe Morgan is having an amazing season, so that's good to hear. The rest of the lineup is meh. I mean, Sutton and Jenkins are great, and our bullpen is vastly improved. Uh, but, I mean, I'm looking at this lineup, and I just don't get it. I frankly don't get it. I don't know what witchcraft we're performing to win as many games as we already have. This is going to change real fast, I think. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, stranger things have happened, I guess. Maybe this is just how important having two premier starting pitchers can be? I guess? Uh, whatever. We're just gonna keep on going. Nothing too exciting has happened. Yeah, I mean, hey, Jose Cardinal, Paul Shaw, and Joe Morgan are smacking the crap out of the ball. Uh, Ray Martin, I kind of think I need to replace you, though. You're basically killing the bullpen. Because the bullpen time to pitch in every single game because you just don't have the stamina. Tom Brewer is not much better, to be quite honest with you. I've got two big-time horses, and then I've got... A decent guy, and then I've got a couple that are just not as good. Um, let's take a quick look and see if we can update, upgrade the rotation without sacrificing too much what makes this team great. Uh, Stairter. Jack Kralik is as good as we get. I don't hate it, but I don't like it either. Like, he definitely represent an upgrade, but I don't know, man. I'm most kind of willing to just keep going with this rotation, just see kind of what happens. Well, that's going to kill the team. Um, hmm. So I guess I'm going to call Ken McMullen, and I'm going to move Earl Avril to first base because someone has to play the position. He's just not going to lead off anymore. That's for damn sure. Uh, Aggie can lead off. Shaw can bat second. And Avril can bat there. That looks good. Uh, give me a depth chart here. And then we're going to go copy and copy. Did fucking Joe Morgan get hit? Like, I bet he got hit. And this is, by the way, this is going to kill the team, I bet. I feel pretty strongly that's what's going to happen because Joe Morgan was our best position player by far, who's having an incredible season. I think him missing the rest of the season is going to... I think we're going to watch as this team free falls, which is kind of what I'm hoping for. I'm not saying I want any of my players to ever be hurt, but this is a good time to be hurt. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna see what happens here, my friends. Okay, my friends. Um, 
Okay. We're going to replace Mike Martinez. He's not that impressive to me. And let's just offer everyone else an extension, but not Mike Martinez. Um, I'm probably going to grab someone off the market to be the new bench coach because I don't really have any great managerial candidates here, but we'll see what happens for sure. Uh, really? Neither Jenkins nor Sutton made it, huh? Okay. Uh, Paul Shaw, Jose Cardinal made it. That's fair. I don't think Joe Morgan would have made it even if he had been healthy. But how good are Sutton and Jenkins doing? I think they both deserved, quite frankly, I think they both deserved an all-star knob. Uh, they're both two of the best pitchers in the major leagues, but whatever. Be like that. Free Jenkins throwing harder. You love to see it. Okay, fine. Hey, Gene Freeze, welcome back. And then I'm just gonna let my my bench coach set this up. Really, you're gonna play Woody Woodward? Why? Okay, I mean Alex George has not been a very good player. That's fair, but okay. Why are you batting him second? Whatever. I actually kind of want them to make bad decisions at this point. I want to see this team start losing games. Unfortunately, it seems like the rest of the National League isn't going to cooperate. Um, which is a real jerk move. I'm not actually upset. I'm annoyed because it means we're going to get shut out of the, the top tier batter market. But, you know, it's not a bad thing to be a much better team. It's going to keep my job at least, which is always good. Okay, great. Ray Martin's done. Uh, I'm not surprised. It was going to happen eventually, but it is happening. I'm going to separate your face. Uh, I've got an idea, Alice Burton. Go to hell. Okay? Just go right to hell. Well, hey, um, talk about trades that work out. Jose Cardinal won a batting title. Uh, he was pretty amazing in his first season with the club. 
and sometimes deals work out and sometimes they work out this deal worked the fuck out so wow um i thought jose cardinal would be good but i didn't think he'd be an mvp candidate I truly did not think he'd be an MVP candidate. Congratulations, Cardinals. Hey, finally Johnny Podrice retires. I thought he would just stay there forever. I did bring in a great power hitter. Just go to hell, man. All right. <clears throat> so first of all, before we talk about anything else, before we talk about absolutely anything else, we almost doubled our win total compared to last season. I'm still not entirely sure how we did it, but we did and that is extremely welcome and let's try to figure out why uh so first things first who carried the load for the bats it was jose cardinal i mean this is a man who had a very good season with minnesota and became genuinely outstanding here in houston um he might get some MVP votes. I doubt he will, but he might. Uh, Paul Shaw was not quite as good as he was last season, but still very, very good. Tommy Aggie improved with the bat uh, in a lot of subtle ways, but he did get better. Jim Paglioni continues to be an important piece to our offense, and he is a tremendous catcher. I'm pretty happy about that. And I got him off of waivers. Ha ha. Uh, Marty Martinez was a very nice import, indeed. Uh, he stabilized our defense at second base, and he hit well enough that having him play the field didn't hurt us. And sometimes that's all you can ask for. Errors are a little bit high. Um, maybe we're not totally set at second base, but I can live with it. Um, let us not forget Joe Morgan, uh, who had a really great season before he got hurt. If we get this Joe Morgan again next season, guys, we might have an actual chance to be a better than 500 team. And I certainly would not have said that at the beginning of last season. But let's not sugarcoat things. Let's talk about where the actual talent of this team was. We had two freaking aces. Fergie Jenkins led the league in war. And Don Sutton wasn't far behind. As I said repeatedly, if you are a team with really low... Uh, if you're a team with really high draft picks, you have to hit on your number ones. That's two number ones in a row that were very good. Let's not ignore Herb's score, though. Um, Herb's score was a useful additional pitcher. Now, I don't know if they'll be able to do this every season, but he's a worthwhile third starter. Um, even if he is deeply flawed in a lot of ways, but he is a worthy companion. We're still short on starting pitchers, though. We need at least two more. Um, but we also need the very best we can get position player-wise. So we take a quick peek at the draft order. We're picking 10th. Uh, so we have a top 10 pick still. That might not be enough, though. That might not be enough, though. Potential. Uh, so right off the bat, I see three truly legendary offensive 
um, superstars in Johnny Bench, Reggie Jackson, and Rod Carew. I see a couple more that are at least tolerable, like um, Amos Otis and Doug Rader and Frank Fernandez. Wouldn't it be ridiculous to have Tom Seaver too? It's not going to happen, but man, that would be pretty insane if we could have all of them. Uh, the problem is this is we have the 10th overall pick and a draft that doesn't have 10 outstanding players. So they're basically five starting pitchers and three position players that I think are going to go in some combination in the top 10. Um, I'd be happy with any of those players falling to me, quite frankly. But I don't think any of them will. I unfortunately have a 10th overall pick in an 8 player draft. Um, and once you drop out of that top 10, I mean, there's some other players that are at least useful. Like, Pat Dobson would not be a terrible pick. Um, we certainly have done a lot worse in the past, and I can live with that. Um, Bill Stoneman wouldn't be a terrible choice. We're going to get somebody good, but if you want somebody transformative, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, like I said, there's some very good players in this draft, but... Most of the best players will be gone by the time I pick. Which is, I mean, it's unfortunate, but that's what happens when you accidentally play well for a season. Um, I want to say thanks for you end up with... Ooh, Ray Fossey's in this draft. No. See, I don't think Jerry Kenny is a great fit for this team. I think I disagree with that. Hmm. Who is missing here? Oh, maybe that is. Yeah. I want to take Jerry Kenny just because I'm happy with my third base position right now. It looks like I'm with Paul Shaw somewhere. Nah, I really can't. I could always trade Shaw if it came to that, but I think he's a really important stabilizing force, so I don't know that I'd go for that. We'll see who's actually available by the time we pick, and then go from there. Oh, gross. Really? You have you have divided equally? Are you a freaking idiot? Apparently you are an idiot. Whatever, man. Um, so yeah. Uh, I wish I could trade up. I'm not going to do that because I think it's a little bit too easy to... Actually, wait a second. Why the fuck are, wouldn't I take Jim Harden? Wait, is nobody taking Jim Harden? Is he like one of those guys that wants like a billion dollars? What the? Yeah, Jim Harden is not being taken. At, oh no, there he is. He's taking at the yeah. If Jim Harden is there at number ten, he's not getting past me. Um, that's just a fact of life. I would love Jackson, Carew, or Bench. They're just not going to fall to me. Uh, I'm not stupid. You can keep Bob Robertson. I don't want any part of him. 
Yeah, this is the way the first nine rounds or first nine picks work out. I'm grabbing Harden and I'm not looking back. Um, I think we're going to have to build this team around pitching, at least for now, until we can pick up a couple more top tier position players. This is a decently deep draft for starting pitching. Might even just take two starting pitchers. And then look at how that elevates the rest of the team. Um, uh, what was Art Shamsky's final thing here? Mm. Power hitters who don't hit for power are not good. You need to figure out your shit, my dude. You need to figure out your shit. Okay, uh, so a very nice bounce back I didn't anticipate, which unfortunately has priced us out of getting some of the best players in Major League Baseball history. It is what it is. Uh, we might get lucky, but I'm not counting on it. I think we're going to try to grab a couple more starters in the draft and basically just go pitching first and see how far that can carry us. I bet it can carry us pretty far. Until next time, however, this has been Avgardian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.